we have been experiencing an alarming rise in man animal conflicts in recent years from elephants to tigers leopards to monkeys animals have been venturing into human settlements with increasing frequency often resulting in violent clashes that result in injuries and deaths while the reason for this trend is complex and multifaceted there are several key factors that contribute to the rise of man animal battles in india climate change is another factor contributing to the rise of man animal conflicts as temperatures rise water sources dry up and food becomes scarcer animals are being forced to venture further and further out of their natural habitats in search of resources this brings them into closer contact with humans increasing the likelihood of conflict the human animal conflict in plantations is increasing every year as we border forests there are human casualties injuries to growers and the workforce besides destructions of the plantation crops and fruit trees we are happy to have with us dr p s isa chairman arinayakam nature foundation and former director of kerala forest research institute he has extensive experience in areas of wild life biology conservation biology and conservation of asian elephant human wildlife conflict etc and has published extensively in these areas he has edited an illustrated series on the biodiversity of kerala featuring various tax of biological spectrum in the region he is active in the field of environmental education and policy making and is a member of decision making bodies including asian Ele elephant specialist group iucn ssc project elephant steering committee member state wildlife advisory committee government of chatisgarh elephant task force ministry of environment and forest government of india approval committee of tiger conservation plan for tiger reserves in south india ministry of environment and forest government of india member committee for studying human wildlife conflict related in kerala government of kerala etc ladies and gentlemen gentlemen may i request you to please extend a warm welcome to him and before and before we go ahead with the proceedings i would like to thank dr isa for agreeing so readily to come and give us share his knowledge on man and animal conflict now i'll request dr isa to please start the presentation thank you sir thank you pasi and also especially my friends from kdhp for this opportunity i'll call it as a wonderful opportunity in fact i have heard about opasi first time from a wildlife literature by devidar erc devidar on nilgiri tar he has uh he has acknowledged and he has uh, expressed his gratitude to upasi for the extensive support he has received while he was doing survey on nilgiri tar an endangered mountain goat i think uh, you at least a few of you know about it all over tamil nadu and kerala so uh, of course later i know a lot of i have heard a lot of i had lot of experience with uh, people like dr mohan kumar and others also anyway uh, this is a topic you know which is very well debated now uh, currently well well debated and of course it's not very fair to talk to you when you are feeling hungry any conservation topic we are supposed to not to talk so i would try to try to be fair on this topic when i am talking about it i have purposefully put it as human wildlife interaction it's not conflict so when does it become a conflict oh sorry it becomes a conflict when the when it is a negative interaction either affecting the people or affecting the wildlife but normally we call it as a conflict only when the people are affected not when the when the uh, human beings i mean only not in the when the animals are affected so that's a that's a that, but this is the internationally accepted definition for human wildlife conflict 
Now, why does it happen? Actually, there is a competition for these scarce resources. So, and there is an overlapping utilization of uh, resources all over. The animals are competing for the same resource and the people are also competing for the same resource. So naturally there is a conflict of interest. One of my students, uh, he had been working in Wynard and I have asked him to look at the influence zone, a zone of influence. The people will be moving from their settlement to the forest for various purposes and the animals are coming closer to the uh, settlements. So where is that overlapping situation? Where is that overlapping zone? And we can probably call it a zone of influence. Now, if you look anywhere, the zone of influence is very, very much, very higher compared to earlier time. Uh, what people say that, you know, it's a recent phenomena. It, it has started yesterday. But look at, uh, this is a 1818 declaration, proclamation by the Travancore Maharani of Travancore where they say that, you know, those who are affected because of the human wildlife, because of the animals in their agricultural areas, they are supposed to go and collect arms and ammunition to protect the, the crop from Hajur Kacheri or whatever uh, they had at that time. So it was there in 1818, and it was there in 1892. This is about, uh, Bordelon has written about it. Especially he is mentioning about the Munar area where people had come all the way from down and then started cultivating in the areas, especially in steep uh, areas, you know, where he says that it's not fit for paddy cultivation, and, uh, but they, they started cultivation. And where the animals have also come there and then created problem. There is a person called Francis. He had been traveling from Calicut to Nilgiris. On the way, you know, he was uh, describing in his book, he was describing Vainard. It, as, uh, it is a, Vainad is dotted with the machan and fences. Machan, you know, that uh, raised the platform, Ermada. So that has been there in 1900, beginning in Vainad, it was there. And also, people had been using uh, various techniques to scare away the, the animals from the cultivation. Now, what is the reason? Unless you know the reason, you cannot go for a solution. People always say that there is a habitat loss, there is a habitat fragmentation because of various reasons. And uh, an estimate is there which says that 45% uh, of the elephant habitat has been lost. That means, you know, elephant habitat. Why do you say elephant? Elephant because elephant is some animal, is a species which requires larger areas. It's not just uh, like other animals. An elephant may require, sometimes in Chhattisgarh, a recent study say that it is uh, using its home range, the area utilized by a herd, by a bull is around 1,800 square kilometers. In, in human dominated landscape, that is the situation. Whereas in areas like Parambikulam, I found that it is around 250 square kilometers. So that's a difference, you know, when in a human dominated landscape, it is traveling a lot. So in such cases, we are actually giving a lot of importance to elephants as an umbrella species. And then there is the problem of habitat degradation, in the, the invasives, because of the invasives. Uh, Senna, I think uh, most of you are familiar. I, I saw it while coming from uh, Metropolitan yesterday on the roadside also. Senna spectabilis is a new invasive like Lantana, but it's not like Lantana. It is much more than that. In Kerala, people call it as Rachas. So you can think of it. You cut it and you get uh, hundreds of them coming up, uh, sprouting from the, uh, from the copies. So, and you have the plantations, say, uh, especially the people call up, I mean, uh, they are worried about the acacia plantations and also about uh, eucalyptus plantation and in some places teak plantations and the cattle grazing competing for the resources again and the fire. So, the settlements, nobody talks about it. Settlements, if this is the settlement, the situation of settlements in Vainard, you can look at this. This is the, the, those the red dots are the settlements. Just, it is scattered all over. It's not just one or two, it is 110 settlements within Vyanad Wildlife Sanctuary alone. Just think of the influence, the zone of influence. And you are talking about uh, animals moving freely in the, all the areas. And this is where people say that the animal should be confined to forest. Where is the forest? And where is the, you cannot make out. You cannot differentiate. So that's a major issue. Normally, another uh, uh, aspect is also covered, like food shortage. 
but an, an, an analysis of uh, uh, the uh, conflict incidences in Wayanad indicates that it is mostly from June, July, August, September, October, November, when food is in plenty and there is no dearth of water and there is a lot of uh, cultivation is also happening. That is the problem, the cultivation. And especially when, when the elef elephants are crammed into fragments, there is always a chance that you know, where it, it may come across with the plantations, with the, come across with the cultivated areas. That is a major issue. And water scarcity, why not has around, uh, every two square kilometer has a one water hole. And this is the situation, water hole. Recently, we were there last week as a part of the High Court appointed committee. This is a situation. Around 205 in wildlife sanctuary alone, of which 130 are perennial. It is there. I have photographed each and every water holes and the check dams. And this is a map of that. So it's not the water scarcity that is creating problem. And is it uh, the barriers? These are the barriers. You can see the entire, almost all the settlements are completely covered with the barriers. Either solar power fence or trench or a rail fence or wall, stone walls. But then, even then it is happening. Why? Because, you know, it is not maintained. These are all done by the government and government machinery doesn't get money on time for maintenance. So, and the beneficiaries are not bothered about how to maintain. I will show you how they maintain it. So that's a major issue. Whereas private fences are working properly and they don't have much problem. Now, another major issue is decrease in tolerance. I am not happy with anything around me other than me, my wife and Goldsmith. There's a saying in Malayalam. So I am not, I don't want anybody uh, uh, around me. No wildlife, no snakes, no lizards, nothing. Everything should be only me and me and me. And crop guarding has decreased and farmers have abandoned the communal uh, planting and uh, that is community planting and guarding activities. That is also gone. So there is no uh, community Conserve, I mean, community uh, protection afforded to the, uh, this place. And in some places, there are issues of uh, human uh, conflict uh, places, you know, the elephants are displaced and the elephants have the problem of, uh, they are forced to change their behavior and they are forced to have an aggressive nature. So this is also one of the reasons, and especially in resource-poor habitats, this is happening. In Africa, it has been shown that, you know, they, they, there is a problem of uh, uh, problem of uh, greater damage to vegetation where there is a culling and where there is a hunting. So this is another one of uh, one of the most important issues. Normally, people say that no, oh, the people, uh, the, the elephant has uh, the population has increased. There is no data to say that elephant number has increased. In fact, you know the recent uh, survey indicate that the population has come down. Not very much, but still there is a decrease in the population. So we may have to, this, this is another issue where the government fails. There should have been, uh, they say that synchronized elephant uh, population estimation, which is not, it is happening, but they don't estimate, they don't analyze the data together. So then only you can think of uh, whether there is any, otherwise there is nothing called the Kerala elephant, no, no Tamil elephants, no uh, Kannada elephants. So these are all contiguous areas. Development, the worst example would be uh, Munar, where in the name of development, they have gone for change of land use, completely change of land use. Anything, Munar should be there. I still remember there was a project given to a fisheries department on Mahasher, Mahasher, you know that, Mahasher, the, the Tor Kudri, to study the fishes and the breeding program and start and everything. You know what was the first demand from the fisheries department? We want to have a guest house in Munar, where there is no Mahashir. Just think of it. So that's a sort of approach. Everybody wants to go to Munar, not because of uh, the uh, issues, not because to solve any uh, programs or to run a program. It is only because it is the, because of the climate. Uh, but the best, or uh, there are issues like uh, this. Jackal, Jackal was considered to be there all over. Recent survey we have conducted and we'll be publishing the report re, uh, soon. We have seen that, you know, Jackal is absent in Wynard. We talked to the elders. They said, you know, it used to be there, plenty of them. But then uh, somebody started uh, killing it 
taking away the skin and then giving the uh, meat to the locals and the, it became locally extinct. And now they say that we have a larger population of wild boar mainly because there is no jackal to predate, uh, predate on the, uh, on the uh, wild boar young ones. So there was a population controlled by jackal. So we normally ask, you know, what will happen if something is not there? This can be a, now at least a few of them want jackal back in Wynard. This is the tourist accommodation facility in Wynard. This is only an example. I'm sure that, you know, in Valparais, the situation may be the same compared to the earlier uh, period. Look at that, you know, the entire area has been and what they call eco-tourism or what they call responsible tourism and which I call irresponsible tourism with no control, no regulations, nothing. They go for night safaris. They go uh, after the elephants and they provoke elephants and the elephant is also changing its behavior and, you know, it, it is definitely leading to aggression among the elephants. There is something called flight distance. You know, at least people working in plantations know that, you know, where how far you should go closer or uh, I mean what you, you should respect their privacy which is not being seen nowadays so that is another one and this is the uh, photograph from Munar again Munar uh, an elephant is there and people are blocking from both sides and taking selfie maybe sometimes that will be turn out to be their last selfie possible and then they will say that elephant is creating problem now of course, you know, there is an issue. Uh, but uh, this is nothing new. This is a bachelor herd. Bachelor herd. Ten, bachelor herds of 10 have been recorded from uh, Karnataka. Uh, but this is uh, only four of them are there. Bachelor herds. Bachelor herds means, you know, by the age of nine, eight, nine, ten, you know, the elephant will, the bulls will start moving out of the herd. This is a mechanism. Nature has given such a mechanism to see that there is no inbreeding in the population. So they go for outbreeding, they mix with other herds and then there is a genetic exchange and more than that they mix with uh, the elder uh, tuskers to learn a lot of, for their survival. But these bachelor herds are sometimes becomes notorious because you know, normally it is a mother who is leading the uh, herd, matriarchal system is followed in elephants. But when it comes here it is the, the largest bull becomes the hierarchy changes the largest bull becomes the the leader and the, if the largest bull is uh, not a very good person and he has the habit of crop riding if he's a habitual crop rider habitual problem man then definitely others will learn from that so what we do is you know we'll capture the the elder one and we have these wild boar issues but at least in kerala uh, and in some of the states also telangana and other places panchayat presidents are given freedom to shoot the shoot the wild boar if it comes to the cultivated areas i don't know whether it is followed being it is being followed in tamil nadu or karnataka i think it should start otherwise you know we will have a lot of anti a lot of people will be turning into anti conservation i mean we should also think about that there is a social aspect of conservation it's not just wildlife biology it is more, no more wildlife biology it's also social aspect it's also economics so everything is coming into the, the field of wildlife now and this is the habit, you know, which we are actually promoting among the monkeys. We start feeding the monkeys. This is a lion-tailed macaque, which is considered to be found only in Tamil Nadu and Karnataka and Kerala. And he doesn't know the status. So poor fellow, because of the, when the roads were widened, it lost the canopy connectivity. So it has to come down to uh, cross the road to the other habitat. But that's the time when we start feeding it and it becomes habituated to that and then it becomes a problem. Modern bonnet macaque is, can, macaque can be the most problematic one, though lanterial macaque is not found everywhere. There is something called, uh, this is that uh, psychiatric and social pathologies developed among the Adivasis and other people who are affected. It affects their physiology, it affects their fertility, and this has not been uh, uh, this has not been measured in most of the places. This is the only study I have seen from Assam by Yadav and Barua, who had done these studies. And this is something which which has to be measured. We normally say that there is property damage, there is a house damage, there is a death. But th these are the people who are mentally affected 
because of the issues. Now, coming to the mitigation strategies, I'm sure you are more interested in that. Uh, most of these mitigations are copied from uh, Africa. And, and that is the problem also in most of the cases. Because, you know, we, it has to be site-specific, but we never look at that. We copy-paste, and then we'll have problem. These are the sort of uh, uh, barriers which are suggested and which are practiced in most of the places, like uh, barriers engaging watches, rapid response teams. We, we will come to that again, one by one. The best one still all over Asia is this, guarding from the top, raised to platform, machan. So that's a, considered to be the best and most effective, but we don't have people to do that. And you cannot ask people to work in the day, during daytime in the paddy field and then go for protection at night in the machans. So that's a big issue now. Uh, CDs have been used, other than the torches, fire torches, CDs have been used in Thailand, thinking that, you know, it, uh, that reflection will scare away the elephants at night. It didn't happen. And ultimately, the paddy fields became the, the waste dump of uh, all the electronic waste. So that is the result of it. But people are worried, you know, they want to, if I say something, you know, they will immediately do that because they want to do, escape from this uh, issue. And chasing, which is very dangerous, of course. And uh, captive elephants are being used, which we call kunkis, you know, the trained elephants are uh, used sometimes to chase away the elephants. But it's an experience from Indonesia where the kunkis have been chased by the wild elephants. Because if the wild elephant is in must, you know, the kunki will be definitely worried. So he will just run away. In Maharashtra, this was the first experience in Maharashtra. When in Nasik, when the leopard came out, they thought, you know, we will use, they will use, this, there is an, something called an evolution in the conflict mitigation. They thought, you know, we will capture it with a net. But ultimately, the people were inside the net and uh, the uh, leopard was outside. So that was the result. But they learn a lot from that. But too much. Uh, dung and chili smoke has been used. Uh, but again, depends on the wind and also the availability of people. And uh, there is a risk involved in that. This is again from Indonesia. Uh, this is, uh, people are using it. A traditional Adivasi wisdom, you know, to escape, to protect their crop from a wild boar. Local innovations are always there. And biofence. Normally people say that, okay, we can use biofence. And the most interesting, uh, but they have started eating uh, agave. Elephants used to eat agave. So that has gone. It's not no more a biofence. There had been suggestion to use salaka. Salaka is considered, is from Myanmar, Indonesia, and other places. And uh, there was somebody who was suggesting that salaka with all these spines and everything, thorns, can save the uh, crop and it will deter the elephants. No because it is the food of elephants. And also, uh, the, the, the fruits, when it is ripened, it can attract more of other animals also. So that could be dangerous. Elephant-proof trench, heavy investment, but not much heavier, because you know it is hardly 10 lakhs per kilometer now. Uh, but you have to maintain. And there are issues, uh, like uh, all these soils are not good for trenches. So you have to look at the soil quality and soil parameters and also ecological parameters because it should not break the, the first order and second order streams and ultimately leading to dryness of that uh, particular area. So that, that is something, you know, very, very important. And elephants, uh, elephants have also started Elephants learn it very fast. They, they cross. Somehow or other, you know, they will cross. Especially if the baby has crossed, you know, definitely the herd, the entire herd will cross. And uh, some of them, elephants will be helping others by giving a hand. Yeah, water is a problem in some places like uh, Coimbatore, where uh, there is a scarcity of water and the uh, forest department provide water. To some extent, you know, it is helpful. And that is happening in Mudumale and Bandipura also during drought, dry seasons. Solar power fence, I would say that you know, technically this is the best. Solar power fence is the technically. But the only problem, you have to maintain it properly. You see this, there is no vegetation outside, uh, below that. 
everything is maintained. And you know, there is no climber, there is no creeper coming on that, uh, so that the uh, power is lost. And even if an elephant breaks it, you have to go and repair it. You have to expect that. There is nothing called a zero conflict situation. Always conflict will be there. We are trying to reduce it and contain it. So this is one of the best method which has been used. But again, there are a lot of changes. It should be in the right place. Uh, in Munar, when uh, uh, Livestock Development Board had gone for this uh, fence in the areas you know, which has been in use by elephants, the elephant diverted to Lakshmi Estate and you know, there had been some death reported from there. So we should be careful. These are also, again, private barriers all over in some places. And you have this. This is a hanging fence, which is considered to be better. Now, a better hanging fence is now designed. This is the latest. And uh, this hanging fence will help because elephant cannot touch it. Elephant cannot uh, use the tusk to break it. Elephant cannot bring in any log and then uh, break it. And if there is a problem uh, of uh, breakage of the fence somewhere on the top, then this fellow will make noise. And he, it will give an alarm and definitely the people will be uh, uh, alerted so that they can come and solve the issues or chase away the animal. Uh, this is how they maintain the uh, solar fence. The government supported solar fence is maintained by some of the private people in uh, Wynard. They have, they are drying the clothes. So that's also there. So this is again one of the best. Uh, rail fence, it's very, very costly. 1.5 crore per kilometer. Always the, the, the principle of conflict mitigation is that it should be cost effective. 1.5 crore means you, know, you can go for about uh, 50 uh, kilometer of uh, our uh, uh, solar power fence. And this is one kilometer. And then what happens? Elephant is breaking it. First of all, now you, your installation should be proper. And then you should maintain it properly. And uh, the Senna uprooting is found to be the very, very, very good result. It is giving very good result. I don't know whether it is affecting most of your plantation areas also, but there is a possibility. But 100 hectares of area, Senna has been uprooted in Wynard by an NGO. No money, nothing is given to them. They raise the money and they do that. And it's very, very good result is uh, now can be seen there. Why elephant matters? Elephants are considered, I mean, I am not talking about monkey. No, not only about elephants. There are issues mostly with the elephants because of the size and because of the, the fear and because of the damage it can, uh, it can have on the, on the people and even the human death leading to human death. But elephant matters because it is considered to be the, the, uh, the, the umbrella species. I told you that it needs larger areas supporting uh, conservation of most of the species, most of the other species. So it is considered to be an umbrella species, it is considered to be a keystone species, it is considered to be a flagship species. So whatever terms you can use, you know, attribute, you can attribute it to elephants. And more than that, you know, it is also helping in seed dispersal. And uh, in another places, uh, dung is also acting as a fertilizer. These are more, a lot of studies have been done in African conditions on this uh, dung as a fertilizer. And then there had been some studies you know, where uh, frogs have been seen breeding in the, in the water pool in the, on the footprint where the elephant has had its footprint. So this I have already mentioned. Now, what are the main factors of uh, problem in the, in the whole conservation issues? The conservation issues, the main problem is this, change in land use. That is happening everywhere. This is a good example from Chinna Canal, from where now uh, recently an Arikumban was translocated to Tamil Nadu. So this is the change in land use. This is 1975 picture. You can see it in 1995. You can see the change. The, the, from the green, the green is shrinking and ultimately it's all fragmented. And you have around 19 elephants roaming around with the three, with the seven uh, bulls in this area, in the, such a small area with a lot of habitations and fragmented habitat and with no chance for it to, to Cross the uh, cross to Munar, the larger landscape, because of the because you have all those red is are the resorts, you know, which are actually preventing the movement of uh, movement path of the elephants from here to the other side. And the waste, definitely waste will attract animals. Waste, especially those waste, those uh, having you know salty food, 
the, the polythene cover with the salty food, that will definitely, because salt attracts. Earlier, uh, during uh, 70s and other times, you know, most of the forest officers used to at, uh, put salt here and there so that a VIP visiting will be assured of sighting of elephants and other animals. So this is what is happening. Waste management should be one of the most prioritized areas in, in all our places, in Valpare, in Chikmangalur, in Kerala, in uh, anywhere, even in uh, Vandiperiyar or wherever you are working, definitely this is one of the most crucial ones. If you don't do that, you are going to have more problem and then you will say that elephants have come to my town. See, this is the situation. This is done by Panchayat in the area where uh, KDHP has given the land and Panchayat is managing the waste here, dumping the waste actually, basically. And they have cheated the High Court also saying that we have already processing the waste. This is Hassan in Karnataka from where about 45 elephants have been removed, caught captured and then some are introduced uh, to uh, Bandipura, uh, translocated to Bandipura and some are in captivity and but still the issue is there. Why, why do we have the issue? Because Hassan is a, is a area, this is the coffee estate and these are the uh, coffee and uh, you have the uh, rubber I think and then you can see the elephants also. So, and there are cultivated areas also in this particular place. Hassan is such a small place with a lot of plantations around. But capturing elephants from there will not solve. So, if you want to stop human wildlife conflict issues there, solve the conflict issues there, you have to keep a barrier so that elephants doesn't come from Kurg, Kodagu to this place. Because Hassan is a part of a larger landscape of around 12,700 square kilometers including Vainada, Bandipura, Mudumale, Nagarhole, and the BRT, Biligiri Rangasami Temple Sanctuary and everything. So you cannot just capture from one place and go on saying that, you know, this problem will be solved. Yeah, this is the sort of situation there. And uh, this is Valpare, of course. Valpare also used to have a lot of problems, issues there. And elephants are crammed into smaller pockets. That was an issue. And, you know, you have the... In the, in the labor lines, you know, you had a problem in Valpare. And, but now, with a lot of effort by the NGOs and by the planters, it has come down now. Almost, almost zero. I don't say zero anyway, but it is now less than 5% now. That is a sort of uh, uh, work, you know, which we, are, we should do to see that uh, you know, the situation is the, This is the condition, no, where... I'm just showing it as an example. It doesn't mean that Valpara elephants are crammed into smaller pockets, but there are areas, you know, where elephants are crammed into smaller pockets and leading to aggression. This is another uh, good uh, uh, method of uh, treating the, I mean, uh, warning system, early warning system in Valpara. That red light means, you know, elephants are around in that area. So people mo mo moving at night has to be careful. So this is a sort of warning given. And this is again in, uh, in Veloni. I think uh, this is somewhere in uh, Hassan. So this has been used as a system. So even from a distance, but you must have a vantage point for that. It may be good for Valpare or it may be good for uh, Hassan or it may be good for certain areas where you have undulating terrain and you have uh, larger human, very peak, uh, peak areas also. And there is an alert SMS also because, you know, if there is a light, it doesn't mean that your elephant may, elephant may not be in your area. It could be somewhere else. But around 1,000 or 2,000 people are connected through SMS. And an SMS goes from a central point saying that your area has elephants. Elephants are in that particular area. So you have to be careful. So this warning system helps a lot. SMS alert. And this is another way of doing it. Uh, this is also to say that the elephants are where in that particular area, whether it is there or not. Now, the, the principle I have already mentioned, this is, it should be site specific. You cannot just copy paste. Just because it is a success in Valpara, it cannot be copied to Chikmangalore. It may be not be successful in Vayanad. So it has to be site specific. And it should be cost effective, no heavy investments, and then socially acceptable and harmless to animal and people, both. There are cases in Karnataka and other places I have seen, people are using spines, I mean, uh, thorny, uh, not thorny, you know, it is like uh, nails 
on the cemented structure, which is harmful both the people, for both the people and the animals. Now, bull home range, I have already mentioned. So in human dominated landscape, elephants are traveling a lot for resources because they don't have enough resources in such areas. This is the adult female range. It's about 2,562 square kilometers. But if you look at uh, the, the main areas, it may be around 1,800. 2,562 is the entire area. So this is a sort of home range we call home range. Now, why do you need uh, larger areas? There is a problem here. There's a little bit of conservation, I would say. Here, you have the, the larger area and you have the smaller areas where we can probably call it as meta populations, smaller population with no connectivity. But we want connectivity. This is a uh, corridor. I think I'm sure that, you know, your areas must have been surveyed by people for uh, identifying elephant corridors. Elephant corridors are, this is the one. There is a narrow connection between two habitats. It can be a to between two larger habitat. It can be between two smaller habitat. It can be between a larger and a smaller habitat. But that narrow constriction, that movement axis, that is the most crucial one. But people nowadays call it uh, any area as an elephant corridor. If elephants are moving, we say that it is an elephant corridor. No, this is the actual elephant corridor definition. But if you don't have this corridor, then there is a problem here. The small populations are confined to smaller pockets, isolated, ecologically isolated, and socially isolated, and genetically isolated. And then what happens? The small populations, because of genetic problems, it becomes smaller population because of lower reproduction rate and also because of the higher mortality and ultimately leading to local extinction. So we don't want that to happen because we are also part of the international community. We cannot just say that, no, I'm not bothered about what is happening. But you get a lot of mileage because of your conservation activities. In fact, uh, the KDHP is well known because of in, among the conservationists, mainly because of their conservation uh, activities, not because they produce uh, tea, <laughs> but mostly because of that. So I think you know that should be the way we should think about. In fact, uh, when I was asking Guy, when uh, I'm sure that nobody asked uh, him this question, uh, I, when he was talking about uh, avocado introduction to some places, my first reaction was, will it attract elephants? Will it affect? Uh, will it attract monkeys? Will it attract bats like a rambutan? It is all possible, but he said, you know, when it is not ripe, it won't. But when it is ripe, yes, that's a problem. So I have uh, my student today morning, he called me from Kothagiri, somewhere near Kothagiri, saying that there is an area where with extensively avocado has been planted, it seems, and they have gone for trench. So they expect elephants. Definitely you are going to have it. I think one of the most important part which is forgotten nowadays in plantation management is that you are not ecologically sensitized. You must th think about the ecological history of the area. You should go for a management uh, plan for your area. I mean, conservation management. You call it as conservation management plan. Uh, Munar, I had prepared for Munar uh, long back, and I think they are now updating it. Uh, likewise, you know, for most of the areas, you can think of uh, uh, protection, and you can think of water conservation, you can, you can think of soil conservation, and you can think of other activities also. Especially when Rambutan came, everybody was happy. And a lot of people have converted their rubber plantation to Rambutan in Kerala, in Kanyarapalli and all other places, Mundakayam and all, everywhere. A lot of people have uh, uh, I mean, converted. And in Calicut, I don't know whether people have converted, but along with Rambutan, they, didn't, uh, they forgot about the history of Rambutan and Nipah and bats. Doesn't mean that, no, bats are the, but bats are reservoirs. The moment you change the feeding habits and the ecological, uh, conditions of the bats, definitely you are going to have a problem. So there is something called uh, uh, the health, I mean, what you call ecosystem health. And uh, that is something, you know, which we have to be worried about. And we will talk about all these conservation only when there is a calamity, when there is a landslide, when there are deaths, we will be talking a lot about it. And now to coming to the press, you know, this is something very, very interesting, very important also. The press is the opinion makers, and they spread rumors and they spread good, good news also. So we have to be careful. So public views are informed by the media. And uh, 
uh, about the conservation threat, but they are talking about, mostly nowadays, they are talking about the conflict issues only. Say, for example, perception. Perception differs according to the people, according to the community. This is an Adivasi uh, area of Atapadi in uh, Kerala, uh, adjacent to our Anakati in uh, Coimbatore. And from where now this, this elephant was uh, captured uh, because of uh, people were demanding for that. Not people means, you know, only a particular community, not Adivasis. And uh, Adivasis had called him Pilandi. Pilandi was, uh, I mean, that name was given because Pilandi, their, their uh, leader, their Mupan, Adivasi head was killed by this elephant. Adivasi head was Pilandi. And they have given this name to this elephant. But the uh, forest department captured it and brought it to the camp and then changed it into Chandrasekhar. Uh, I think a conservator or somebody's name. The people from Atapadi traveled all the way to Kodanad to say that, no, my Pilandi should be Pilandi even in captivity. Or you give us back the elephants. Now this is another interesting story. Uh, because, you know, this indigenous identity of elephants sometimes, that matters. This is uh, Padayapa, very famous Padayapa in uh, Munnar areas. People have been, it is a celebrity. And once it was missing for some time, you know, people were worried. And they started uh, 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 finding fault with the department, saying that, oh, somebody must have hunted it for tusk, for its ivory. But actually it came back. When it came back, it has started again uh, going for... Uh, vegetables and coconuts and everything. And then they said, no, he's a villain now. Now the last demand, the latest demand is that, you know, it should be captured. But you should not. Because there is a story of Ahmed, the African elephant in Kenya. Ma Ahmed had a, was carrying a three-meter tusk, long tusk. Both, both the tusk means in a six-meter long tusk. And it was ten feet tall. And the Kenyan president, based on the request from conservationists, Kenyan president of that time, said that I am going to engage three armed guards just for Ahmed. So that was the season. That is the, that's the spirit. And that fellow, that president was, I mean, he was quoted everywhere as the best. So likewise, uh, the, the, this man is also one of the important ones. And there are various news, you know, because these newsmakers, they, they are not bothered about, they are not going for good news. They are always, the moment you read a newspaper, you become definitely frustrated and, you know, negatively complete, the day is gone. So that is what is happening now. The Tuskar, yeah, I have already mentioned about it. See, look at the way, people are just there, he is not bothered. But recently it seems, you know, he has uh, some, done some damage and now people have started doing that. This is an interesting one. Uh, you can see this elephant. Don't think that it is a captive elephant. It is a wild elephant called Bhima in Hassan district. And he is being led by the forest officials running, uh, walking in the front with a, with a sound system, egg system, saying that, please move away, Bhima is coming and give way to him. He has not killed anybody. But when there was an attempt by forest department to capture it by darting, that particular doctor was killed by him. Till then, it was like this, you know, he was walking freely. People are also happy with that, Bhima. So there are certain symbols and there are certain examples also. Yeah, can we go to the next one? Yeah. So this is another incident. There, I'm talking about the media reporting and their standards and their ignorance. Everything is definitely visible in the, in the news items. This is about the elephant, you know, which has been chasing uh, from Valpara, there is a road to Kerala. Malagapara, Valpara, then Valachal and Chalakudi. And when the elephant was, when the vehicles are moving through that road, they are supposed to, most of the people are going to see the elephants. But then the report comes that elephant is chasing the vehicle. Where? In the forest. It's in the, in the, in the other place, not outside. Yeah, this is uh, Shabirimala vehicle carrying the pilgrims were uh, hit an elephant in Vainad, a tusker. But the next day, the paper, newspaper, one newspaper carried the correct news and the other paper said that, you know, elephant attack uh, the uh, pilgrim bus. That was the sort of news they have given. And elephant runs amok during the temple festival, runs amok. If it is happening somewhere with a wild elephant, they will say elephant attack. So double standard. 
A lot of people are being killed by the captive elephants when it is brought for, celebra for festival celebrations in temples and churches and mosques. But there is no complaint. Spillover effect. There is a spillover effect. If I am telling something here, it is definitely carried away to another area. And, you know, if I am seeing a leopard here, people will feel that I am also seeing a leopard from somewhere. Even a jungle cat is sometimes termed as... Uh, as a, a leopard, as a tiger. Because, you know, that's a sort of psychic created by the, the media and other people. So, conspiracy theory is something, you know, which is going on in social media. That nothing can uh, stop them. They will go on telling lies and there is no possibility of fact-checking. Only one or two stories will be fact-checked in the channels. And who will check the, the facts? of the channel news, nobody knows. So there are several such stories and this is something called a conspiracy theory. Uh, anyway, what could be done? It could be, as uh, avocado people had been telling, it could be that you know, there should be consultations. It's not very costly like them, not a fortune. <laughs> Talk to them. Use their expertise, use their experience, and put your experience also, because the people in that area know better about the uh, terrain and about the entire uh, the behavior and which are the animals coming into that area. So I think that dialogue with the uh, stakeholders is important, and site-specific models should be established, site-specific models. So that is also very, very clearly done. I'm sure that you know, in most of the places we can solve the issues to some extent. That means you can bring down the incidences. At least human death can be reduced or, or even damage to crops can be reduced. Collaboration with the local self-government departments, important, but uh, I don't know how far. It also depends on your relation with them. Say, for example, the plastic waste and other things are their botheration. They are collecting money also for that but still they don't do that. So we had to go for a opinion making. We had to see that you know, some kind of licensing and lobbying has to be done. Awareness program should also be conducted among the stakeholders because a lot of mis misgivings are given you know, by the newspapers and by everybody and through social media especially. So that, those things have to be cleared. Now, this is, the, this is our perception and we have to know the perception of the elephants also and what is happening around. I think uh, the most important part is to have interactions, constant interaction, awareness programs, even for your laborers. I will say that you no know, awareness program is important. I'd been to, uh, we were having a, our Asian Elephant Specialist Group in Borneo, where there had been uh, discussions, especially on oil palm and the elephant problem. Uh, ultimately, that what was decided was that, you know, I mean, there was no, no chance of sol solving the issue entirely, but there could be some areas which can be left for the elephants. That's the only solution. That was the solution. But in our case, I don't think you know you have uh, such uh, issues are there. Uh, I remember uh, seeing a letter written by the, the then Tata Finlay to uh, to UK asking for permission to plant uh, in a new area in Munar, and the question came from there is that an area used by animals like elephants? Then they, they reply, yes, then don't plant it. So that's a sort of culture we should have. I think, uh, but economics is there, definitely, uh, but ecological parameters also should be looked into. Otherwise, you know, we are going to have disasters. May not be today, but tomorrow. Monkeys. Monkey menace is something, you know, especially the government of India, and I'm sure some of the scientific communities have also contributed to that. They have put it in schedule one, like elephants, like tiger, monkey, the bonnet macaque, the macaca radiator. It should have been in schedule two. Because you know, a lot of the main issue which can never be solved, at least with the current knowledge, is monkey problem. The only possibility is to capture all those things and bring it to a shelter uh, where rescue and rehabilitation or whatever you call it. I think that's the only way out. I remember uh, a meeting with the uh, representatives, people's representatives in uh, Vainad, where we, nobody was, and the chairman of the municipality, Bateri Municipality, Sultan Bateri Municipality, he was not talking about elephants. I said, what happened? 
no the elephant is far better monkeys are the problems monkeys are having its uh, uh, nahana no this baith is he is bathing in my water tank what to do every day i cannot go and clean it and if i lock it it knows how to open that so monkey is a real problem i will still call it as a menace considering the the problems which people are uh, having so we may have to find out a strategy this is again i will say site specific strategies yesterday i think uh, there was a yeah there was a news that you know in trivandrum the capital of kerala has some monkeys which has appeared i said you know very good then now they will think about it how to solve it so uh, that's it thank you i am sorry that uh, i have been talking to you this is my email and phone number uh, we can definitely work together if you want uh, i am there available and we are working together anyway uh, what at whatever time they want it in munar we are doing a lot so the, my interest was only to give you some idea about what is happening and what is possible to solve not solve to reduce the risk of having uh, these animals around thank you so much yeah you have management plan i will call it as conservation management plan history and plantation uh, plantations always had a very beautiful management plan earlier no okay. beautiful beautiful management plan yeah. because the, if you have a 1000 hectare estate the tea will only be in 500 hectares the balance area will be vested forest or what swamps everything has been marked and kept what happened over a period of time the new policies came in vested forest was taken over today you go to see all the vested for us today are all occupied by people and that is where the problem starts you mentioned madigadan shola i have worked in those areas there was nothing there there was there was no human habitation there i think you can avoid this mic there was no, <laughs> there was no human habitation there there yeah. was no conflict also yeah yeah because plantations are a buffer zone between between the forest and the human habitation the moment you took over our land it is not that is all it's just land nothing to happen the policy i am talking about not no not in uh, not in uh, um, madigattan or nearby the government has now taken over the land because in this time news print area they surrendered because they, they are they are not producing any paper now they want it back because they, they have started uh, producing papers so newspapers no see our uh, interest is also to have better policies better management practices that's why i said you know i am not a hardcore conservationist who says no manishada no i won't say manishada but at the same time i would also tell that you know it should be given some space because you know it is also see tourism industry is completely dependent on this just now you see you go to move why not all the tourism industry people came to see us and they have given representation you know what is the request please don't ban tourism high court said no tourism now of forest department the moment forest tourism department uh, uh, tourism is banned the other tourism are also affected so the entire tourism industry is thoroughly gone so we have to and it's a, one of the major industry lot of livelihood issues see i'll tell you i'll tell you if you go back 100 years you have to go back and stand there and then think that was correct at that time tea uh, uh, grasslands were converted for tea that was correct at that time eucalyptus were planted that was the correct uh, correct decision at that time now after a long time we say that oh this fellow is drinking lot of water and we have a lot of problems something which i forgot about uh, the solution as a conflict mitigation there is lot of uh, uh, social media messages are going around saying that honey bee the bees can uh, do wonder and about lucy king and all that actually in kenya it was a success lucy king said yes it was a success uh, especially because there was an alternate income for the people even if there is a damage there is an alternate income but it was a failure in indonesia it was a failure in uh, uh, thailand it was a failure in malaysia then it was a failure in sri lanka so she said i am coming to sri lanka and i will show that it is a success 
you know what happened it was not a success and while going back she wrote that there is something wrong with the skin of the uh, asian elephants it is too 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 thick and so there is something wrong with the sting of the uh, bees here and still honey is very good for health that is something no, that's not something new so and it was tried it in kerala the elephant came and threw it away and this, uh, the third problem if you are going to have bees in the in the forest and honey bees and you know honey uh, what is that you know the basket or whatever you call it you can expect a bear also definitely you get. yesterday my student from gurlur i mean he's working in now conflict issues only tamil nadu we are working so he was calling me and he said sir you can see if you want to see sloth bear coming to uh, plastic uh, dump there you come to gurlur somewhere there nearby there is an area where plastic and all the waste are dumped and bear will come by 6 o'clock in the evening and it can be photographed so he was telling that so think of the problems lot of issues are coming into this that's a major issue i'm sure that you know you are all hungry so he has to say thank you <laughs> thank you dr isa for a very interesting presentation i think most people forgot that it's lunch time with all your uh, you know with 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 your uh, with your talk so uh, if people have any further questions you can interact with dr isa during lunch so uh, in uh, on just a short concluding remarks we've had a very interesting session today it's been good participation here and quite a few people have joined us virtually uh, there's uh, dr guy whitney has been very open shared a lot of his knowledge and uh, many of uh, the uh, the facts and his experiences in avocado what he shared with us more, i think most of us are hearing it for the first time so uh, he uh, apart from his presentation today we have facilitated for him to travel to uh, a lot of the planting districts so once he uh, you know he he will be completing that trip during the course of this week so we will uh, you know we will we will see how to continue uh, en engaging with him for the benefit of our members and some of the suggestions that came out were that we should have trial plots we should uh, uh, have them uh, planted in different growing conditions and and see the uh, learning from that so upasi will also work with members to see how that can be taken forward it was very interesting listening to mr kenneth blades uh, because from a practical perspective he shared his knowledge on uh, implementing a large avocado project uh, there is a lot of learning uh, for us from there and we uh, th thank you mr kenneth for being very open with your knowledge and uh, sharing your experiences so dr isa needless to say we've had an interesting presentation it's a ch big challenge that we are facing at the moment and uh, we'll have to look at it from a, from uh, as what he described with from a different light to understand where the problems originate from and local conditions on how we can uh, handle them <laughs>